In this video, we'll look at how you add plugin parameters to track controls. In my last video with the Spitfire Audio Labs template, I had a lot of people asking about the track controls function. It's actually really simple, and there are several ways that we can do it. I'll show you first the way that I normally do it. So I've got a plugin here, and I, let's say I want to adjust the cutoff. I just touch the plugin parameter. Then I go to the param menu, and we can show in track controls. And now, if I zoom back over to here, the hi hat has this layer A cutoff. We can right click and we can remove it. We can uh, do MIDI learn. We can go right to parameter modulation. We can show the track envelope, or with the alias function, we can give it a name. So uh, there's a window that popped up here somewhere. There we go. And we'll just call this filter cut. So now on the track, we've got filter cut. And also, once we have the effect parameter on the track, you can see it in the TCP, but we can also see it in the mixer view if we just make the track bigger uh, and make sure that on the master track, we enable show effects parameters when size permits. And so filter cut is right there. Here's the hi hat track and the filter cut. So if I open up the plugin, I can adjust this parameter from, I'm dragging in the mixer and it's adjusting it in the plugin. I can also double click this to show and hide the plugin that that parameter is assigned to. If we just click in this area, we can go to the next possible way of assigning these plugin uh, parameters. So you just click in the track control area and then it'll give you a list of all the parameters in that plugin. Uh, this is Reactor, so there's hundreds. Uh, there's, what is it? There's like a thousand, there's a thousand parameters in here. So just as an example, let's do the, um, uh, the drive control. And so drive is this one. Drive is, drive is probably for the effects. Yeah. So there's another option. Now let's go over to another plugin. So let's say the the reverb track. I want to eat. I want to adjust the filter again on this track. So I'm not going to do it this way. I'm actually going to open up the automation panel, the envelope panel. So in this window, we have all of the parameters visible. We can choose what things are visible, what things are armed what uh, envelopes are shown. And so we've got um, the track envelopes, we have the receive envelopes, and then we have the um, effects parameters. And from here, we can click on the UI button and that will add it as a track control. Yeah, so the frequency low shelf, let's enable that. And also band to gain and frequency. If there's a plugin with huge number of parameters, you might want to use the last touched effects parameter uh, button, and then it will only show the last thing that you touched, which is, in this case, the, the low shelf gain. All right, so now on the verb track, I've got my EQ, my reverb, and I've got track controls. If you double click, I can bring up the plugin, or I can adjust them directly here. So that was going through the track envelope panel. That's also visible in the TCP area, like right here. My second favorite way of doing this is using a keyboard shortcut. So we can open up the action list and find parameter. And we can go to like last touched. Yeah, show or hide track control for last touch parameter. I have this on command option nine. So I'm going to open up Supercharger. It's a free plugin from Native Instruments. I can take the compress knob, command option nine, and that brings up the, um, the track control there. One other kind of minor thing I want to say about this 
is that if you want these to be visible in a different order, it's the order that you um, enable them where they uh, they show up. So if I touch the input trim and then the punch control, they go there in that order. But if we go to the envelope panel, we disable all of these, and I want the punch one first, then compress, then input trim, they'll be in that order. So just something to keep in mind. This is a great way to save time, especially with working with templates. So I have an effects track template that has all my favorite reverbs and a lot of those plugins um, I've assigned track controls. So I can do that right from the mixer and I don't have to look at the plugin to adjust like the filter shapes or uh, the amount of decay on a reverb, all these kinds of things. It's a big time saver and there's less visual clutter. It's a really great way to keep focused. So that's about all I can think of to say on this topic. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing here, please support on Patreon so I can keep making videos for you guys. And check out reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. See you.